Hi there, for those of you that maybe don't know me or haven't uh, seen any of my videos before, uh, my name's Aidan Keneally. I'm a professional founder coach and advisor where I help startup founders like you be better than yesterday every day. Now this video is going to be a little less structured than I'd like, um, so please forgive any sloppiness as I won't probably be editing this massively. Um, so yesterday we had a meeting with a large group of New Zealand startup founders and senior leaders within their teams uh, to answer some financial and employment questions that the group were having, uh, and this was in conjunction with Oxygen Advisors. And it was a productive discussion, and these are sort of the key notes and discussion points that I've summarized uh, in this video just for everyone else's benefit. Um, basically we discussed sort of staffing considerations in the short term and long term, and also the financial things that you should be thinking about and what steps you should be taking to plan and forecast for the unknown. Um, and so the main themes of the meeting yesterday and the feedback that came through was what I want to um, sort of talk about because the group really got quite a lot out of it, more so than just uh, some of the stuff that you might be reading um, online or, or some of the, the other sort of information that you're getting through LinkedIn, et cetera. So um, just that's, that's sort of the intention of this, this video, just to sort of summarize these key points. and hopefully disseminate them in a pretty useful way for you as uh, you're coming through some, some uncertain times. So I just think it's important to remind ourselves that you know, we don't have all of the information and we don't understand the impact of what's going to happen sort of in the short term and in the long term. And that's actually okay. Um, what it does mean is that it does make planning difficult and we should be planning for uncertainty more than anything. But that was the general theme of what, what came out. It was really sort of an interesting insight. Um, so the first thing we sort of want to talk about is, is the, the short-term impacts of staffing. Um, and I'm going to sort of break this down into the financial aspects of staffing and then what you should actually be doing for your staff, taking care of them and um, maybe supporting them if they do have to work from home. So the, the, one of the first questions was, should we be um, preparing for staff to work from home? Yes, is kind of the, the fundamental answer there. Um, Whilst New Zealand isn't in a lockdown yet, I think that's probably just a case of if, not when, um, and then for how long. So we are lucky in New Zealand that we do have a bit of a window to plan for helping staff to work from home. And it's at this point that you should be making plans if you haven't already. Um, and so there are a few things to consider which we'll talk about soon, but um, if you do need any information about best practices or anything, um, you should be talking to people, um, talk to people like me who I, I work remotely with many teams and uh, there are some sort of ways that you can do it well um, and as are there are many other people around. So just seek people within your network, um, get some information about best practices and then find out what might work for you. Um, and so to support people, yeah, the things really to consider um, is if you don't have the systems or the ability to work from home yet, um, you sort of want to break it down into a few things. And the first and foremost bit for helping people work from home is the health and safety considerations for your employees. So um, as employers, and some of you probably are directors of your companies as well, um, first and foremost, the health and safety and well-being of your staff is kind of the most important thing to be considering. You're still technically responsible for them when they are working from home. So as best as you can, you need to give advice and provide really healthy places for people to work, um, particularly if they're going to be working from home in a sort of a more structured capacity. Um, so that's the first thing, and we can talk about that soon. Um, second thing is actually being really upfront with people about um, keeping their mental health and their physical health properly, so people will get sick. Um, so reinforcing ideas of like correct washing of hands, basic hygiene, make sure you get up and shower, all of those kinds of things actually come into play when you've got a large staff working at home. People sort of forget about that kind of stuff, so just keep that in mind. So if we think about working from home, we actually have to break this down into sort of two or three components, three components actually. Um, there's technology, systems and processes, and then keeping staff well-being at front of mind. So when we think technology, you have to be um, preparing these people to work from home. So webcams, laptops, microphones, you know, make sure that you prioritize audio over video is another key thing. Um, and then software becomes a part of it. So there's hardware and software considerations. So 
sort of getting agreed we're going to use Zoom, Slack, Asana, all of these things are available to help teams to work remotely, um, get the technology right first so that everyone's prepared and trained on how to use it, then you have to um, go into the next part which is creating some systems for work. So working from home isn't rocket science but it does take a bit of practice and it does take some rules. Okay, so how to correctly run meetings with your microphones muted, one speaker at a time, all these kinds of things should be practiced. Um, and they do take practice to get right. And getting that prepared now, or at least having systems so that you can improve it over time is really, really important. Something to consider and something that you should be talking to people about, you know, best ways of doing it. There's lots of different ways you can work from home or have the teams working from home, but just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, and so the last bit is um, health and safety. So it's it's really important to remember that people are human. <laughs> they will have families. They'll be concerned about their families. They will themselves be getting sick. So you want to make it as comfortable and as um, accommodating to them as possible, at least in the short term. Um, then thinking about can you provide work chairs, can you provide desk spaces, encourage people to work in sort of well-lit areas. All those basic things that you would also provide in a work environment, in an office, need to be considered for the home. So just, uh, I've heard stories of people um, taking monitors home, taking their laptops home, taking their work chairs home. You know, if you have all of that kind of stuff available to you, just be open to letting people set up a bit of a, a temporary workspace at their home. All that kind of stuff is all just really good things that you can um, you can take care of now in preparation for for what might come. Yeah, and again, so just reach out to people if you um, if you have any questions. Find people that do work remotely or that run remote teams because they'll have all sorts of really interesting insights and ways of working that you can start adopting and, and bringing into your own uh, ways of working. Okay, and I think I've got another point here. Just Really, 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 really important to remember that your staff are human, right? They're going to be nervous. They're going to be nervous about the future, just like you are. Um, making sure that they're front of mind and that you can provide everything for them to work effectively at home so they don't have to go and find their own systems or that they don't create injuries for themselves. Um, I find a lot of people who sort of work at desktop tables can do this, you know, encouraging them to have breaks, encouraging them not to work all hours of the night. All of these kinds of things, you just have to be the one that leads that and make sure that it does happen. Don't assume that people will be able to work from home easily. It's it's up to you guys to lead it. Then in this meeting yesterday, we, we started talking about long-term staffing issues. And this is where the financial considerations probably come into it a bit more. So um, how do you accommodate people to work from home for the next couple of weeks? That's, that's what we've already sort of talked about. And those are the um, the things that are pretty easy to take care of. But then when it comes to long-term disruptions in your business, um, what are the staffing considerations that you need to be taking and what do you need to be thinking about now? And so naturally people always sort of go, right, if there's an economic disruption, um, we have to think restructuring, we have to think about the financial implications of the business and how we can resource the business to, um, to survive. And then once things pick back up, how do we... Uh, how do we re-engage for growth? Um, that is something we did consider. It's not something I'm going to advise on because it is dependent upon your business, your business model, what your current staffing levels are and your cash requirements, which we'll talk to soon. But things to be considering is that you can sort of let people have unpaid leave or you can go to reduced working hours. Giving people something to keep them going is really important and just trying to work with the staff so that they do have things to do. Um, looking at ESOP allocations and things can be a way of keeping people going without cash remuneration. Um, that's something you should discuss with your board and your financial advisors, whomever they are. Um, if you've got CFOs and those are the, the people that you should be planning that with. But you know there, there are considerations either way. Um, some companies in New Zealand can do that, some people can't but just keep that in mind as an option. Um, and again, with long-term employee needs, uh, communication. So providing clear, honest, and upfront communication as, as often as you can is really, really important. Um, so there's no point in beating around the bush and confusing people. 
Um, so if you don't know anything, then be honest. You don't know what's going on, but you have to prepare for, for certain things. Um, if you do need to let people go, be upfront about it. You know, give people the certainty that they need um, and don't be afraid to, to be honest. Uh, it can be a really, really hard thing, but you just don't want to sort of lead people along, stretch them out, get them a bit more worried than they need to be. If they know what's going on, at least they can plan themselves. Just be clear about it and be clear why and just be honest and open with your communication. Uh, right, and so that was sort of the, the general summary of what we talked about in terms of long-term and short-term staffing. Um, we then talked about the government relief package. It, it doesn't seem like it'll be that useful for a lot of high growth startups. It doesn't fit for the business models that we've got. So there are people that are working and lobbying for some, some more information and probably some more help in that respect and we'll just keep you guys up to date with that. Um, um, and then probably more of what we ended up discussing um, was the impact on planning and forecasting and this is something that I think is, you know, it, nothing I'm about to say here is me giving financial advice so please don't rely on this as financial advice but a lot of this was just a good general discussion and um, I think just a sense check for what is reasonable to be doing and what you should be thinking about in terms, in terms of how to plan and what you should and probably shouldn't be doing in general sense. Um, and I think everyone was pretty, pretty happy to assume that this is going, not going to be a short term issue for a lot of businesses. Whilst there is an outbreak that will probably resolve itself, um, you know, in the next sort of month or two, ideally, um, there are going to be longer term financial consequences that extend well past the pandemic. Um, so really getting prepared for I think long-term changes to the business and how it operates is, is really important be prepared and just think a bit beyond what's immediately in front of your business and what the impacts to the extended kind of economy might look like and what that might mean for you um, right and so in, in reality the the number one point that was raised was that you need to be considerate of your cash and obviously in these situations cash is vital um, so the advice that everyone was sort of happy to take and on board and what I think the general consensus was that um, evaluating your liquidity and your likely cash scenarios um, is the first thing to do. Understand your worst cases, when you might run out of cash in particular scenarios and just get really clear as to what that might look like. Again, there's just no certainty either if, if companies are looking to raise money or if they're in the process of raising capital and I'm involved in a couple of these types of businesses. Um, we just don't know what, what the market's gonna be like. We don't know whether people will be open to investing in these types of businesses. Um, you, you, you can't necessarily rely on the fact that what might have been a certainty you know, two weeks ago is now going to be something that is, you know, you're not gonna necessarily be able to attract the investment. We just don't know. Um, so plan for the fact that you may not be able to raise money or that you may be able to raise, you won't be able to raise as much all that has to come into to your planning and that's why you should be talking with um, financial advisors, talking with your board and going through these options. Um, and especially, I think re-evaluating the plan consistently and it might be you know, every couple of days because you know, things change that quickly now. So keep that, keep that in mind and we'll talk about communication soon but that's something to, to be considered. Right, so the options for, for getting cash into the business now, again, not, not financial advice, this was just things that were discussed and things that I've read about other people doing. Um, may not really be an option, but if you do have debt facilities and um, you can draw down on them, that might be something to consider to get, get cash into the business. Um, naturally, if you're taking on debt, there will be a cost associated with that and you need to know what that is um, and you need to be comfortable that you can um, support any extra debt later on. Um, so again, that's, that could be an option, particularly if the interest rates are, are, are dropping. If it's available, um, then naturally there's, there's cost cutting stuff. So if you aren't seeing increases in revenue, some companies that I'm working with are seeing increases in revenue because of the nature of what they are. Um, but if you're seeing diminishing revenue and you need to cut costs, then you should be thinking about staffing how to manage that, um, what are the minimum levels of staffing that you can get away with, can you sort of extend, um, can you extend your cash by bringing in part-time sort of contracts and just operating at a, at a reduced level, um, 
definitely put a freeze on hiring. Um, any growth plans probably can be reconsidered. Reduction of marketing spend. All of these things, you know, uh, the, the, the ways that you can cut costs without really shutting the business down should be, should be addressed. Um, but again, these should be talked through with your board, with your team, and just re-evaluated consistently because that's how you're going to plan for the uncertainty. Um, another really interesting one then came to say, right, well, talking, talking cash, you should be really on top of your receivables and your payables now. So front foot, any vendor and supplier um, conversations that you need to have, and you should be honest with them. Um, best to get on top of your receivables now. So if people can't pay, you need to know that as quickly as possible and then you can plan for it. Um, there's no point in thinking that you can rely on people to pay you and then you know, 20 days later it doesn't turn up, we've gone out of business, etc. So um, have those conversations now. Be really upfront and honest and just get as much information as you can. And then conversely, um, if you owe money to people, and see how long you can extend your credit for. Um, can you... Um, have different ways of paying, can you spread that out? All of these types of things um, should be discussed with your suppliers and um, you know you never know how they might respond so it's worth having that conversation and just getting that sorted. And then if, if there are ways for you to take advantage of any opportunities that you see, um, this can be a good time to, 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 to do that micro pivot, so the restaurant reorganizing into a click and collect, um, but just be considerate that you don't want to waste resources unnecessarily or um, create something and, and you know fall into a bit of a rabbit hole where just because you think it's a good idea um, you don't want to spend resources unnecessarily and or be aware that if things do change very quickly you might have to scrap what you're doing. So just all, all of those good commercial sensible things need to be considered when you look at taking advantage of certain areas or pivoting into another area quickly but there are lots of examples on Google where people are doing this just to tide things over, so have a bit of research maybe. Okay, and then sort of discussed a lot of it through the video, but reinforcing this idea, and it's what we discussed in the meetings, that communication with key stakeholders is key. So um, those would be employees, providing clarity and being honest and upfront with them. Um, then suppliers and, uh, well, suppliers and um, any partners that you might have, you know, it, it's also good just to keep them up to date with what's going on. So you don't necessarily have to talk about it in just a receivables or payables type, but you know, give them an overview of what you think your business is gonna look like, give them insight into what you're thinking and how your business is, is, is evolving, because this information also helps reduce uncertainty for them. And in general, if we can reduce uncertainty in any way possible throughout the economy, um, we're going to limit the effects of the disruption and you know, uncertainty is a real, real big killer here. So if you can provide as much information for as many people as possible that need to rely on you and your business for their business, then give it to them and give it to them honestly and keep them up to date. And that's the general sort of theme there. Um, so that includes customers, suppliers, anyone, right? And then finally, um, key stakeholders to keep informed, keep up to date would be shareholders investors, future investors and board members. So really you should be keeping your board and key people up to date regularly. Um, I know I'm having meetings with um, CEOs sort of daily almost and there is huge change happening every 24 hours or so. So um, being on top of this now, talk about the health, the financial health of the business, um, health and safety of the staff and any anything that may be material to the running of the business should be discussed and you know your board should be on top of this and they should be informed they should be keeping an eye out on the bigger picture as well um, so don't be afraid to have those conversations and keep people up to date because it is going to be important to help manage the situation as we see right and so generally that that communication is key and the, the the best way to do it is just to be upfront and, and concise and honest about it all um, I think really on that, that point, you should also start only relying on trusted information sources and I would recommend that that would just be the government. Um, uh, yesterday, so today is Friday, um, 18th I think of March, um, yesterday in New Zealand there was a very credible rumour that the government was actually going to enforce a lockdown and I think within two hours, so I heard about it, the 11 o'clock and they said 
announcement's happening at one, it's definitely happening, prepare, and then there's this whole panic, right? Um, and obviously it didn't happen, the government put a message out and said, look, don't, don't panic, we're not shutting anything down, but we are you know, restricting people to, a, restricting gatherings to 100 people. Now, as, as leaders of your company, you need to be really careful with how you present the information that you've got and what you make your decisions on. And this is really important. So you do need to keep in mind where you're getting your information from and how you're filtering it and then how you're presenting it because we are, we are responsible to the staff, right? And we're responsible to ourselves and our company and our shareholders and all these people. And you need to make sure that you're the one that is providing the insight and the guidance and the leadership. And A, you don't want to be making decisions on crap information, but you also don't want to be sort of inciting panic or uncertainty through the dissemination of false news and, 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 and the like. So um, just be really careful and aware of where you're getting your information, what you're relying upon, etc. It's just common sense, but you know, I think everyone got caught up in a bit of that panic yesterday, so just keep that in mind. Now, um, some of the, the last things that came out of the meeting, there were some people that had really interesting articles that have been linked, so I've put them in the description box below. Have a read of them, they are worth taking the time to read. They give all sorts of information on how to prepare. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff down there, so just have a look. Okay, and so, that's it. Um, I know it's a bit of a long video. Uh, hopefully that was of use. Um, if you did find it of use, then do feel free to share it around with other founders that will also get some benefit of this. Um, and um, hey look, if you have any questions about remote working or about anything that we've discussed in this video and um, you want to reach out and have a, a bit more of an in-depth discussion, feel free to reach out to me. I've linked my um, LinkedIn below. Um, I'm also happy to help uh, point people in the right direction. There's a whole bunch of people that know remote working, financial advice, all sorts of things. So the point here is just to get people comfortable with what's going on and, and put you in touch with the right people so you get the right information when you need it. I guess that, that's really it. So um, until next time, my name is Aidan Keneally um, and I'm a professional founder, coach and advisor. And so, you know, until next time, uh, I look forward to talking to you and, and keeping up to date with, with anything else that might be going on. Um, have a good day. Cheers.